welcome. Uh, today we're talking with Clayton Hodgson. He's uh, not only a friend, but he's a, an expert in the, the electrical industry. And we're going to talk about solar panels because here in Utah, there's a, a lot of interest in, in those, uh, you know, minus the guys knocking on your door, <laughs> you know, saying, hey, what about this? But so I thought maybe a little education would, wouldn't hurt anybody. You bet. So let's talk about it. So Clay, why don't you fill us in a little bit on just solar panels in general? Yeah, you bet. So my background is I've, I've been an electrician about 30 years. Uh, I've been working in the electrical industry that long and, and watched the rise of solar panels over the last 20 years or so to really become more prevalent. And I like the idea of, of solar panels as much as the next guy. I like the idea of some energy independence and I like to be able to you know count on my own electricity. And <clears throat> one of the things that a lot of people think about like solar panels is hey if the power goes down i still have my solar panels uh during the day at least so we can maybe discuss a few misnomers about that um th there are cost benefits to solar in certain places um <clears throat> a lot of places around the country solar is is a good deal because their power is so expensive we kind of have the opposite situation in utah where power is pretty cheap so solar has to be really cheap to make sense um, and so the times when solar really makes a lot of sense is when you can finance it really cheap, which is hard to do right now with higher interest rates, or if you have all cash and can just buy it out, then it, uh, can make some sense, uh, it can be very sensible, but it is going to take some time to return on its investment. So, so just a second, go back to one of the things that you, you kind of, you hit and skipped, but, um, I, I think one of the things that people don't understand is solar panel it, solar panels are great during the day yes not at night correct and so it works during the day and and part of the maybe one of the not i wouldn't say negatives but one of the things with it is that you're gathering that power during the day when most everybody's not home right but when you need it when everybody gets home and it's dark and the tvs and stuff it's not producing. And so you've got to pull back from the grid and, and have and be connected to. Is that, is that correct? Yeah, correct. So you have to stay grid tied, you know, even with solar panels. It's illegal in the state of Utah if you have grid access to not be tied to the grid. You have to be tied to the grid. So when you're producing during the day and not using all of it, you're selling it back to the grid. And then at night, you're pulling from the grid. And so it works wonderfully as if the grid were just kind of a giant battery. One of the um, negatives here in Utah, again, is that we don't get paid an equal rate for our power versus their power. So they want to give us about half or, or a little less than half of what they charge us for power for the power they buy. So they buy it at wholesale, sell at retail. So if we buy it for a dollar, if we buy it for a dollar, we're selling it to them for 50 cents. Correct. Yeah. Okay. So... When a, a person comes in and sits with you to talk about a solar system, what they're going to tell you is things like, we need to figure out what your complete usage is for the year. And we do that looking at your power bill. And then we need to size a system that's going to produce 125% of that so that you're selling more than you're buying back. Another way to accommodate that is with batteries. You put some big batteries in your garage. You can charge those during the day as you're overproducing and then draw from those batteries at night. So you're putting less dependence on the grid. Batteries currently are still very expensive for what you get out of them. So you can't just park your Tesla and draw off your Tesla? <laughs> not, I mean. <laughs> I'm kidding. There are ways, but, but to me, not typically, no. To me, that's if I did it, that's how I would want to do it. Is the battery? I'd I'd want to be off the grid a hundred percent. Right. Produce my own batteries, so that way I'm I'm running twenty four seven on my you own. With the battery, so let, just for batteries, let's talk batteries just for a second, and we'll jump back to solar. A typical Tesla has anywhere between sixty four and eighty four kilowatt hours uh, battery pack. So sixty four to eighty four kilowatt hour battery pack. The Cybertruck, I think, has double that. It's so big and heavy. If it's going to get three, 400 miles, it has to have double the batteries. Um, <clears throat> a typical battery that you would buy for about 10 grand and installed would probably be 15 to 20 grand in the market is going to be nine kilowatt hours. 
So you'd have to have about $100,000 worth of batteries to charge during the day so that you could then charge your car at night if it needed a full charge to transfer. <laughs> so the okay. battery market isn't really, it's funny because a Tesla is 40 grand with 80 kilowatt hours of battery and an 80 kilowatt hour battery would cost you a hundred grand. Wow. <laughs> okay. So the car is free if you do it that way, if you think of it in those terms, but th there's not an easy way to just plug it in and it charges because there's all this proprietary software and everybody wants control of that. And so you have to go through Tesla, then you have to have a power wall. You have to, anyway, there's some things, there's ways to do that, but it's not just as simple and cut and dry as you think. Um, but just back to solar panels, if we take all that out of it and just go back to solar panels, um, if you can buy solar panels cash free and clear and not finance them, you probably can get your money back in electrical savings in about seven years. If now, is there like it just, I know it'd be a broad brush stroke, but is there like a range? Is it like 20 to 40,000? Is it 30,000? I mean, ish. Yeah. So a typical home is going to draw, you're probably going to need somewhere between eight and 12 kilowatt hours. Uh, I mean, sorry, eight, eight to 12 kilowatts of solar panels, right? Right. So somewhere between 8,000 and 12,000 watts of solar panel production. Uh, each panel these days are about 400. So 8,000 watts is 20 panels. 12 would be 30 panels. So you're typically going to pay somewhere around $3 a watt. Uh, in Utah, I've seen anywhere from $250 to 4 But typically, you can get about $3 a watt for your, uh, your, what your power will cost you. A solar system will cost you. So a 10 kilowatt hour system is going to cost you 30 grand. Okay. An 8 is 24. A 12 would be 36 in that metric, right? But you can figure just about $3 a watt is a pretty solid number. You might get somebody comes a little under, uh, some people will be a little higher. But if you're, if you're financing that, uh, especially at today's rates at 7% over 20 something years, you're going to pay 60 or so thousand dollars for that system. So now you double your payback. So it takes 15 or 20 years to really replace. That's if power doesn't change cost. So the big place where solar could become really smart and you can look like a genius is if our power prices shoot up to where the rest of the country is and I, based on we're lower and and like half to a third of some places around the country the likelihood is our power prices will go up i doubt theirs are going to come down that doesn't right. happen very often right so if our power prices go up and you've bought your solar now you basically lock in what your power is going to cost you as long as your system is sized right and actually produces all your power so that you're not buying from the grid. Um, there's a lot of people out there that'll go put in a massively undersized system so they can hit that, hey, we can get you solar for 20 grand and it's going to cover everything. And then it doesn't, doesn't work. Cover, it covers half or less than half because they undersize the system so that they can overprice and sell per kilowatt and, and get sales. Um, one one of the things here in Utah that I knew, do know impacts your solar panels if you want to do that is the sun. Yeah. Because here in Utah in the summer that sun is almost straight up uh, over the top of us, but in the winter right. it's it's over the southern sky a little bit. So you've got to be able you don't want it on the north side of the house. Correct. You want it on the either the south side or the west side to be able, or correct. South is best. So if you've got a south facing sloped roof, that's going to be your best. There's a, there's a optimal angle for solar panels and we use engineers to figure all that out. They tell us what it is. They, when we do a solar, if anybody does a solar system for you, they're going to send your, your system in for design. And an engineer is basically going to take a satellite image of your house and get all your specs and tell them this is exactly how to install it, where to install it to get the optimal, um, production um now do the do the pan when they do that do the panels all have to be together or no. can you put half on the south facing and half on a west facing yeah you'll see that quite often where panels are on several different roof lines um and so you'll get we want to optimize the south face as much space as we possibly can on the south face west is second best and then east north is 
never good. You never don't really do. want it on the north. So, but it depends on your roof and how you lay out and whatever. If you don't have an optimal angle and enough space for optimal angle, the way to overcome that is put more panels on if you have the room for that. Uh, so sometimes a 10 kilowatt hour system, 10 kilowatt hours worth of, or 10 kilowatts worth of panels will produce five or six because it's just not optimal. And so it just depends on, you know, you've got, there are some, some variables. My, my advice for anybody getting solar quotes would be a work with someone you like and trust if a guy knocks on your door and you think maybe i'm not sure about this get a second opinion or a third opinion or a fourth opinion get several opinions because you're going to hear different things but if you're talking to a salesman you're going to get sold if you're talking to an electrician you're probably going to get more detailed facts and information because yeah we need to make money too but we care more about I would say on average, electricians are a lot more interested in you as a customer being happy because they're still going to be around in a year right. or five years versus mm. the salesman is probably not. He's doing it for the summer and he's out. Sure. Well, it, and like you said, the the best way for this is you need to have it be in that house and, and really understand that you need to be able to, you're paying that off for 20 years. Yes. And so to get it, the benefit your benefits going to come in year 21 to 30. So you need to be in your home for a while. Yes. Now from a real estate standpoint that you've got to think about that solar system. Yes. It's mounted on the, the, the roof of your house, but it's, it's like parking a car on your house because somehow one way or the other, either the solar panel has to go with the, the sellers of the house, and be removed and then the roof has to be re fixed and all that kind of stuff or it's it stays and then the buyer uh, takes over the payments or somehow if, if things are done right you know can be really done right to where it's all paid off when the house is purchased that's the best case scenario because right. then there's no payments yeah. or anything like that then you do have a free power plant on the house correct yeah but but sometimes you know when you start looking at some of the these houses it'll say you know, my house is 500000 but then I've got a $30,000 solar panel system on it that the buyer needs to take over. Yes. Well, And I still owe twenty or twenty five. Right. Which <laughs> And so it's not quite as bad as an HOA because there is a benefit, <laughs> right? Yeah. But, but but there's also a cost. There's a cost. And and if the system is sized right and producing right, then it's your power bill. So you're just paying that payment instead of Rocky Mountain Power. Okay, it's sixes. But you are tied to that payment for the duration of it, whether you take it over. And in my understanding, in most cases, the mortgage company is going to want to pay that off. Correct. And so it's just going to get tied into your loan uh, for your house. So you're going to be paying on that for 20 or 30 years, regardless of but, whether it's producing or not. But if you go in and you say in your maximum purchase price is 500000 and now you've got a $30,000 solar system on there, you may not be able to purchase that because might push you out of your push you out you know over your budget yeah. and over what they're willing to to finance for you another piece that people often don't think about is that if that solar system has a problem um, there are a few different types of systems out there some systems use uh, either optimizers or inverters that are right underneath the panel which take so solar panels produce in DC, which is like a battery, right? So they produce in DC and at varying voltages. And as they produce that, that inverter turns it into 120 volts or 240 volt and sends it to the panel in the house where we can use it. That's what we use in a home, 240 and 120 volt. So somewhere that panels, that electricity has to be turned into AC voltage that can be used. Sometimes it's right under the panel and if a panel goes bad, that panel goes bad. You lose one panel. Not that big of a deal. If you can't afford to service it right away, you still get the benefit of the rest of your grid. But very often, and especially in older systems, they used one inverter for the whole string, they call it. And so if you have one panel go down, you lose the whole string. And so you can lose all your production, still have your payment, because they don't care whether your system's working or not. Once you sign the loan document, you got to pay for that payment. So if 
again, these are just things to think about and know, know the difference. Yeah. Know what type of system you have. <clears throat> if you're going to buy a home that already has a system on it, my recommendation would be call a service provider, a solar service provider. <clears throat> There's some great ones right here locally and have them take a look at that system and, and validate that it's in good working order and that everything's functional and that you're not going to have problems in the next year or two. That, uh, that's a great idea. That's a great idea to have somebody come check it out, look at it. Yeah. So do, do solar panels, I know here in Utah, we get snow and stuff. Right. Do they need to be cleaned? They're not going to produce if they can't see the sun. So if they're under three feet of snow or three inches of snow, you're getting no power. The reality is they will, they're, they're a real slick surface, so it'll tend to slide off faster. Any bit of sun at all will um, melt Warm those a lot faster than a, a typical asphalt roof. So you're not like you're not going to get power all winter, but there are going to be days when you don't. Um, some things to think about are production in August is going to be at least double, maybe triple production in December or January or February, right? right. So certainly during those winter months, your production is going to go down. And in the summer months, your production is going to go up. The offset that a lot of solar guys talk about is, yeah, but that's perfect because in the summer is when you're using the AC and that's the big heavy electrical load and that's going to, you know, and, and maybe a pool or whatever. Well, if you have a hot tub in the winter or uh, we recently had a customer with two hot tubs, we put in a solar panel. His and hers. <laughs> yeah, well, they had a hot tub and a swim spa, but essentially in the winter, a swim spa has to be heated to keep that water at 100 degrees in 20 degree weather it takes a lot of electricity. And so he was seeing, hey, wait a minute, in the winter time, I'm not getting anything out of my solar panels. Well, you were, but you just doubled your power bill at the same time we put in the solar system, you put in the hot tub. So it doubled that. Uh, There's variables. Variable. Is my point. Yeah. So do your homework, get a few people to come look at it. I would talk to an electrician, even if they don't install solar. They know how to think electricity. They know how to do the math. They can calculate watts. They can make this very simple for you versus a solar sales guy that's just going out trying to sell solar. And he knows nothing about any of this. They don't just sign don't, here, just sign exactly. here. Exactly. <laughs> they know how to get forms signed and they know how to get financing through. They know nothing about the functionality of this stuff other than what they've been told by their bosses. Yep. So <clears throat> with that, you know, you go back to buying a house or selling your house, you know, have that due diligence done, know what you're doing, know what you're getting into, make sure you understand the, the pricing and the components of, um, even here in Utah, the, there's interesting things because, you know, we were talking about the dollars for the, the power company going back and forth. There's different power companies. I mean, most of Utah County is Rocky Mountain Power. That's correct. But but you go down to Payson, and Payson's got their own plant now. That's right. And Salem so, has their own power. Spanish Fork has their own power. Springville has their own power. Provo has their own power. Well, the southern half of Utah Valley are all independent. All independent, and they make their own rules. That's well, correct. that's because I know when we moved down there, we got really tired of Rocky Mountain. When anytime the power would go out, It'd always go south. <laughs> we always got stuck with the outages. So anyway, wow. but hey, thank you so much for all your expertise and, and your time. And yeah. um, hopefully this uh, answers some questions. Uh, moving forward, if you got questions, throw them online. Let's see, uh, see if we can't get them answered for you. You bet. All right. Be wonderful. In, in summary, I would say solar can be a wonderful product, but do your homework and make sure that you trust who you're buying it from. I like it. All right. Thanks, Clay. Go check out all the other videos, and uh, we'll see you later.